The fallout from the docuseries Shiny Happy People continues and it is far reaching. The documentary chronicles the fundamental movement of the IBLP and the Duggars. A lot of us are discussing the doc merely as viewers of TLC shows like 19 Kids and Counting, Welcome to Plathville, and Sister Wives. However, a lot of people see a kinship between their own upbringings and what they watched in Shiny Happy People, even though they didn't specifically grow up in the IBLP. Olivia Plath and her biological sister, Lydia, have been reacting to the doc and discussing their childhoods. Lydia Plath, Olivia Plath's sister-in-law, not to be confused with her biological sister, Lydia, is disputing Olivia's claims. This is a fundy feud and we have a lot to talk about. Let's get into today's video. <laughs> Hey everyone, what's up? It's Sarah and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be voiceover commentary. Real quick before we get into the video, I just want to plug our Facebook group. I'll leave the link in the description of this video, but it's a place for us to all mingle and chat all things reality TV. I invite you all to start chatting and start your own conversation threads. Alrighty. So season four of Welcome to Plathville wrapped in August of 2022 and where we left off with the Plaths on the show was the family picking up the pieces and dealing with the fallout after Kim and Barry's divorce. On the show, the family was pretty much siding with Barry and since the show has wrapped, Kim has been causing viewers to scratch their heads. She is going by a different name on social media. She's dating Isaac's flight instructor and I'm guessing former family friend. And she's gotten a DUI. Nowadays, we rarely see Kim photographed with the family, but the kids are often posting about Barry. As for Olivia and Ethan, they moved to Minnesota after season four wrapped. They went through a period of gushing about each other on Instagram to now being radio silent about their relationship. Olivia hasn't posted about Ethan since November, but an official separation or divorce announcement has not happened, so fans continue to speculate on the status of their relationship. A season five for Welcome to Plathville has not been announced either, so we really don't know what the future holds as far as this family being in the spotlight. The Plaths were briefly featured in the doc Shiny Happy People as an example of a fundy family that gained national recognition by becoming reality TV stars. The Plaths, like the Browns of Sister Wives notoriety, are an example of how one might have misdirected pursuits of grandeur when it comes to thrusting your family into the spotlight. It seems like reality TV fame was really Kim's desire as she had been pushing this fundy partridge family angle for quite a while. It seems like Kim Plath and Cody Brown had this idea that they were going to show off just how superior they were at this whole family thing, but in the end, their shows really highlighted the cracks in the family foundation and ultimately the families fell apart. If there's any lesson to be taken here, it's that there is no right way to family. Families come in many shapes and sizes and the foundation should be love and providing a safe place for your kids, if you have kids, to thrive as they are. Thinking you know better is a critical mistake as we clearly see exemplified with these two families. When we first met the Plaths, they weren't allowed sugar, soda, or technology. As a matter of fact, Lydia, the third oldest girl, was the only child trustworthy enough to have the computer password. She was even allowed a cell phone, but that quickly became a hot topic when Kim went through and read all her text correspondence to a boy she liked. Not cool, Kim. Super not cool. There was no concern that Lydia had like fallen in with a bad crowd or that reading through her personal messages might unveil some danger she was in. 
Kim was just being nosy. Kim really didn't need to worry about Lydia as we see because she is firmly fundy. Kim is off divorcing her husband, listening to the Beastie Boys, and drinking alcohol these days. As her parents, specifically her mother, are becoming more secular, Lydia has become a local missionary. Since season four wrapped, Lydia has been traveling the country with her group, The Jesus Generation. traveling and posting about the work she is doing as the release of shiny happy people happened and of course her comment section reflects the coincidence someone commented are you in that crazy cult just like the duggars are lydia responds actually no far from it and have never been olivia plath has entered the chat Olivia Plath, wife of oldest son Ethan, was cast as a sort of villain on the series Welcome to Plathville. She was dangerous in Kim's eyes. She turned against her own fundy upbringing and was corrupting her son by exposing him to things like Coca-Cola. Kind of ironic given the lifestyle Kim is living these days. Olivia grew up in an extremely conservative, quiverful family. She was one of 10 kids, and she has a biological sister named Lydia, who she was estranged from for many years. I actually interviewed Lydia Megs on my channel about eight months ago, and I'll link that interview in the description of this video if you want to check that out. Olivia and her biological sister Lydia have rekindled their relationship in the last couple years, and sadly, they suffered a tragic loss when their younger brother Micah was killed in a bicycle accident at just 15 years old. This actually happened shortly before the release of Shiny Happy People, and both Olivia and Lydia spoke out publicly about how they were not allowed around their younger siblings for the last few years, so that made losing their brother all the more tragic. Olivia and her sister teamed up and did an Instagram Live in response to the release of Amazon's doc to give their perspective on growing up in fundamentalism. In all fairness to Olivia, Welcome to Plathville was referenced in Shiny Happy People. So while her family may not have literally claimed the IBLP as their religion, there are enough similarities between the IBLP and the way the Megs and Plaths were raised for Olivia to speak on her experience. Olivia seems to equate pretty much all Christians with fundamentalism, with the exception of a few. I do want to make one small um, correction to something I think that is a little bit inaccurate. So in our live, my sister and I were talking about judgmental Christians and how we really haven't met any that aren't. And I wanted to take one small second to say that that is a generalization. Like on the whole, Christians in my life have been so judgmental and condescending. <laughs> and um, there are a few exceptions. There are few and far between, um, but I have met a few who I think would identify as a Christian and have been so kind and loving towards me. I made that statement, or I don't remember if I made it or my sister made it, as a generalization because so often, you know, religion is protected and used to cover things up and everyone's just like fucking over it. We're all tired of religion being used that way. And so as a generalization, I was like, yeah, judgy Christians haven't met one that isn't. And I think I've met a few, but anyways, just wanted to say that. Her sister-in-law, Lydia, seems determined to distance her family and her upbringing from the IBLP Bill Gothard, and this documentary. Lydia was answering fan questions on her Instagram stories, and someone asked, is what Olivia said true that your family belonged to the IBLP cult like the Duggars? And Lydia answered, no, it's not true. We never have been and never will be. I didn't even know what that was till a few years ago. Here is my take on the situation. I feel like Lydia Plath, Ethan's biological sister and Olivia's sister-in-law, is splitting hairs 
And I think that Olivia is generalizing unfairly. Objectively speaking, I think the Plath and Duggar upbringings are far more similar than they are different. I've even seen people that grew up FLDS react to the docuseries. So I think people that grew up in various forms of fundamentalism can see their upbringing reflected in shiny, happy people. And I think that that's what Lydia Meggs and Olivia Plath were speaking to. I also don't think it's fair to paint all Christians with the same brush when discussing this docuseries. I grew up Christian, I was baptized Catholic, and I can only speak on my own upbringing, but this is far from the way I grew up. I personally don't really appreciate Olivia lumping us all together like this, but I do understand that she has suffered some serious religious trauma at the hands of people perverting the word of the Lord to fit their own selfish agendas. Let me know your thoughts on this feud between Olivia and Lydia Plath. Are you looking forward to a season five of Welcome to Plathville if they do announce another season? As always, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and join us in the Facebook group. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Reality Squad, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a good one. Much love.